I just finished sewing something I said I would never sew. Hi, I'm Christine. I sew a lot and I sew my own clothes. The garment I said I would never sew is the Donnie shirt by the Friday Pattern Company. Now, I consider myself something of a Friday Pattern Company super fan. I love the aesthetic. I have really enjoyed sewing the patterns, but when I saw this release, I had an immediate reaction of, this is not for me. And I'll insert some line drawings here and a few photos. I thought this very boxy cropped fit would read old lady on me. I may be a grandmother, but I'm a very young grandmother. And I don't want the Mrs. Roper look. If you know, you know. I thought, I'm just gonna give this one a pass. But as happens, I kept seeing all of these really interesting Donnie shirts popping up on Instagram and on YouTube. And my friend Michelle from Michelle Sews Again made one while we were doing a little Zoom social. And I thought it looked fantastic. That kind of sealed the deal for me because it looked very cute on Michelle. I thought I'm going to give it a try. So let me tell you a little bit about the pattern and then I'll get on with my experience. I made some notes here. So the Donnie shirt goes in the usual Friday Pattern Company sizes from extra small to 7X. So that is a hip of 34 to 63. Friday Pattern Company drafts for a B cup and for somebody five foot six. I really do like that they include that information because that lets you know what alterations you might want to make to the pattern before you make your first garment. So my measurements fell between the extra extra large and the 1X. And I decided I'm going to go with the straight 1X. That's my usual size and the Friday Pattern Company. So for fabric, they recommend you use light to medium weight fabric. And I'll show you what I chose to use. This is a Dashwood Studio cotton. And it's probably their quilting weight cotton. It feels almost like a poplin to me, but not quite. Uh, but I would say this is very close to what the art gallery fabric is like and definitely something you can make a garment out of. I fell madly in love with this print. It's in my colors and I love the mid-century modern vibe that it gets. Anyway, I think it has a mid-century modern vibe. I felt very comfortable cutting right into this fabric. It wasn't super expensive. I think it was under $10 a yard. I think it was $9.83 a yard. I don't know why that number is sticking in my head, but I felt like I could get right into it. One, I bought it at a local fabric store. I knew I could run on back to 5 8 seams if something didn't work out. And I'm very confident in the drafting of the Friday Potter Company patterns. And I knew that I was going to do some careful homework before I cut out my pattern. So you'll notice that my fabric has a direction to it and I needed more fabric than I would have otherwise needed because it's directional. And I also decided to add three inches to the length of the bodice. You can see in these photos here that it's a very cropped top. And part of my homework before I cut out my pattern was I looked at Instagram. I chatted with a couple of friends who've made the Donnie shirt, Michelle in specific, and I measured the pattern piece to see where it fell on my body. I decided I wanted to go for a high hip finish, not a high belly button finish. And I decided to add three inches in length to my top. So I ended up using almost two and a half yards of fabric. It was 45 inches wide. It was directional and I think that I have about 15 inches left of this fabric. So here's my Donnie shirt. I'm very happy with it. There are only a couple of things that I would tweak for the next time. 
I did find that the shoulder seam comes a little bit off my shoulder, so I need to do a little adjustment there, maybe half an inch or so. And an adjustment that I made that I did not mention, in addition to adding three inches of length, when it came to hemming the bottom, I was sewing this and I was like, oh, I think it's gonna be even shorter than I anticipated. So I turned it under a quarter inch and then again a quarter inch for the hem instead of doing three eighths and three eighths again. And I'm very happy with where this hits me. The only other thing is that with the added length, I'm not quite crazy about where the back end lines up on me and because I added three inches of length I like where the front is finishing but the back is finishing a little too far over my bum. No complaints. I think I need to wear this a while before I make any real definitive changes to how I'm going to sew it up the next time. The burrito method on the yoke it's all enclosed and neat. I use one of my Kylie in the Machine labels. It says, hello gorgeous. And I think it really matches well. I intended to use the hello gorgeous labels inside the clothes I make for Charlie, but I have instead been using labels like yo mama made it and made by mummy on anything I make for him. It gives me a little chuckle and he doesn't mind. I think he does a mental eye roll, but he hasn't complained and he hasn't taken them out. Then I wanted to mention, because I used a stiffer fabric, the sleeves tend to stick out a little more. I'm going to see if I can find a photo where you can see how this stands out a little bit. It's not terrible. It's nothing that would keep me from sewing this again in a cotton, but it's something to be mindful of if you don't want that look. So all in all, I really do love this shirt. The pattern is classified as an intermediate pattern, and I think that is mainly because as an intermediate sewist, you know when to go slow, when to take your time, None of the techniques are really hard. I would say it's have that experience in knowing that when you're inserting the collar that you need to make sure you go slow and make sure that you're not getting any puckers and tucks. And how I do that is as I'm feeding under the sewing machine, I go slower than I normally sew. And I will just Feel with my fingers before I feed the next few inches in to make sure that it's flat and smooth. And the same could be said for inserting sleeves. Just make sure that you know that your fabric is behaving how you've pinned it and how you want it. When you put it under the machine, sometimes things can get a little catawampus and that comes with experience knowing hey, I need to go a little bit slow and I need to check and make sure I don't have a thousand buckers here. The only other thing, because the collar's not difficult, is I would recommend that you be very careful in marking all of the notches and dots that are required. This collar went in pretty easy and it's simple. There's a dot that you place on your pattern pieces and one part of the instructions is you sew to the dot and you stop. You don't go over that dot. And you come up from below, you sew to the dot and you stop. That's it. It's not tricky, it's just making sure you're being accurate and following instructions. Now, if you need a little more hand holding, I think this is a great improver pattern and it'd be a super confidence boost to move from some of the beginner patterns that are straightforward and simple to something with a collar and with a sleeve and to feel like, yes, I can do this. Just go slow, follow the instructions, and if you need a little extra hand holding, the Friday Pattern Company has a so long video that goes step by step through making the top. 
So I made something that I thought I would never make and I'm glad I did and I'll be making more. If you want to see more of my makes, you can check them out here. <laughs>